What if I were to tell you there was a creature in the water that could rise to the surface and move on land? What if I were to tell you it could breathe the same air that we do? What if I were to tell you it has a voracious appetite? What if I told you, on average, it's three feet long and can weigh upwards of 40 pounds? Would you be intrigued? Frightened? Perplexed? All of the above? If that's so, then sit back and enjoy as we investigate the lungfish on Keener's Bazaar Animal Adventure. Today's specific lungfish is the Australian or Queensland lungfish. This olive brown fish lives in relatively mundane, still flowing waters in Australia's Queensland territory between the Mary and Burnett rivers. Ancient even by fish standards, Australian lungfish first appeared in the fossil record some 380 million years ago, when the first vertebrates were beginning to develop on land. And even more awe-striking is the fact that through recent discoveries in New South Wales, they have remained unchanged for over 100 million years. In that span, dinosaurs have come and gone, like the Tyrannosaurus rex. Several ice ages had occurred. Humans had evolved from apes, and man has walked on the moon. It is absolutely preposterous how long-lived and unchanging the lungfish have been in the fossil record and into the modern day. Now, on to the first aspect that makes these magnificent creatures so bizarre. Their appearance, with stout, cylindrical bodies that appear condensed despite tapering at the end, and small heads with beady eyes, these creatures do indeed seem from another time, an ancient primordial creature that many people would find bizarre and ununderstandable. And unlike other species of lungfish, the Australian lungfish has more rounded, lobe-like fins, which may be useful in navigating the bottoms and other habitats of their slow waters that they call home. Another feature of these more lobe-like fins, despite not being strong enough to support their weight fully on land, they do add with ambulation, as in when the lungfish goes out onto dry land, which they can do for up to a week so long as their skin is wet, they can move side by side and use their pectorals for directionality, which is something that is absolutely astounding and adds to their bizarre appearance, of course. Now, back in their natural habitats, when they're not searching for food, lungfish can be found in depths of water between 5 and 10 meters, or about 15 to 30 feet, hanging close to hollowed out portions of the riverbank, caves along the bottom, the root systems of trees that happen to be poking through the banks, and the choking reeds at the far edges of their swampy territories. All of these habitats serve the same purpose, though, as purchase for the lungfish to rest on during the day before heading out to eat in the late afternoon and into the night. And boy, eat do they. To obtain their maximum size of 150 centimeters, or over 4 feet in length, with weights over 95 pounds, Lungfish need to eat a lot, and they search the bottom for food a lot. Crustaceans, freshwater worms, tadpoles, fish, frogs are all on the menu for these creatures. And unfortunately, this is not the most pleasant way to go out. As with the shark bite, it's quick, easy, painless, you're dead. However, with lungfish, they're not fast enough or don't have sharp enough teeth to just chomp their prey and kill them. Lungfish feed by abduction or suction drawing their prey into their mouths and positioning them to be crushed under their teeth. And since the early days of their life, their teeth have been adapted for crushing. But I can't imagine that's a pleasant way to go. Now, on to the reason why it's called a lungfish. Unlike other lungfish species, the Australian lungfish is not an obligate air breather, meaning it has gills that function just like any other fish would, and it only uses its lung in dire situations. This lung is a modified swim bladder, and it has an interior honeycomb-like design that is perfect for holding oxygen for gaseous transfer, something that occurs with the dozens of capillaries that are found in this lung, something that is found much in our own lungs. The gas exchange can be heard literally when lungfish breathe out, with breaths that sound like small bellows being squeezed. As I'm off to do with these Keener's Bizarre Adventures, it's time to talk about the status of these creatures. And unfortunately, the Queensland lungfish is a vulnerable species, and it's teetering on the point of becoming endangered. Human encroachment into the Mary and Burnett rivers is affecting their mating and primary habitat, and invasive species that are being introduced for food, like the tilapia, are proving a challenge as 
Tilapia are voracious, and they tend to eat the young lungfish and even their eggs before they have the chance to grow. This is not a problem for fish species that reproduce yearly, but lungfish are an ancient species, and they do take time to get up to their mating age despite growing fast, which means yearly spawning isn't inherently the case, and sometimes bi-yearly spawning, meaning every two years, isn't really the case either. And that's a terrible thing, because losing an ancient species like this would be a great travesty. All right, that concludes this episode of Keener's Bizarre Adventure. I hope you all enjoy, and if you have an animal to recommend, I'm glad to hear it down in the comments below. Uh, until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and be good people.